Good morning everyone, welcome back to my channel. Okay, this video is just dedicated to the French garden. Now this, if you recall, is the piece that's on the massive panel. So it's finished length, who knows, just depends on how it sort of meanders down the panel. So what I've done so far is I've just invisible stitched down the key components. So there's no decorative stitching yet, it's just tacking down with lots of little stitches all the bits that I know are going to be um, in those positions. I did adjust it slightly, like this piece, for example, was sitting over here. I just felt like it looked a bit random, needed to be attached to this cluster. This panel here was up the top, brought it down. It seemed to feel like that's where it needed to go. And then I trimmed out this little rose and popped that in as sort of like the feature through this zone. Then coming out of it is this piece of... Um, embroidery yet to be embroidered. Now I have left this side up because in my last video I sort of imagined a sign going up here announcing what this is all about. So in case I need to tuck it in I've just left that sort of flapping around there so I can sort of slide in under. The white flannel there was a big piece of it somewhere here I end up breaking it down into three little pieces. It just looked like the only thing I could see when I looked at the panel was that white rectangle flannel that came out from underneath this piece of quilting. And that's the wool blanket that was under the quilt as well. So it's been really good to be able to utilize the three fabrics that came with that snippet. Um, I have put my house into position and I really just uh, turned it in and uh, stitched it down. I didn't quite have enough fabric to turn this edge so I've just stitched it down for now and I'll make a note that whatever I do in the way of maybe a vine or something it needs to cover this edge because that's not folded under and as I went I just tucked in some random doily bits I found a bit of lace that reminded me of a fence got my front door on I haven't done anything stitching on the house I've just invisible stitched it down and I've got a little chimney which I use the side of this piece so it gets a little bit of text on the chimney. I'll just zoom in a little bit so you can see some of those elements. So they're just sort of pieced and waiting for the next stage. This panel here I'll embroider at some point. I'm not sure when. I might just do a little bit from time to time and start working some of these flowers. Um, what else have I done? I didn't change this piece much at all. I just sort of like how that's going to be my path. Sort of gives the impression there's a path and there's plenty more fabric left from those doilies to, um, let's just come back out, work into the piece some more. So the wildflower prompt is going to be through this zone here. And I started playing with um, some sari silk to start creating my flowers. In amongst the search for different elements, I pulled out some wool, which will be stems. I think that matches really well with the colors. I found a couple bits of green. I like this green because the back is a, a different look again. So for the price of one, you actually get two. So don't be afraid to have a look at the back of your fabrics because often there's a color that might be a little bit more muted. This one here, there's not a lot happening on the back. It's got that white undertone, so. But then you never know. You'd be surprised at times what colors sort of connect to other colors. Now, sari silk, I've got a heap of sari silk that I have, um, think it sort of matches these tones. And a bit of cream. And what else did I grab? I found that piece of, um, chiffon it's not chiffon it's a rayon and it's got a little bit of embroidery on it which I thought was interesting whether I can use that or not I do have an idea of maybe using just a little bit of it to create something I don't know um, I grabbed these so I'm sort of looking for little things now these are the connectors between doilies and you'll get a bigger bigger doily motif and then the crochet would need a little piece to connect the other bits so I tend to keep them all as I cut up a doily because they can create 
you know, unusual shapes. So I thought of maybe grabbing a couple of those out to try and build my wildflowers. So the plan is, well, I think I've got a plan, maybe making my feature flowers quite large and chunky and then come in underneath it and put more embroidery in front of it. So I'm working from the back forward, if that makes sense. Another thing I found, I've got a one only of these. It was on a uh, journal that I purchased and I ended up removing it because I thought that's just so cute. It's not hand sewn as in one of us. It's been done by a, a machine, an industrial machine. And I thought, well, that looks like it could find a, a, um, a home here. At one point, it, I had it sitting on the little house, but uh, like it was pinned there, but a couple of hours later, I took it off. So I'm not sure what will happen with him. And I also found another piece of embroidery. I did work this one in a panel in the Roxy Journal of Stitchery Volume 1. It's in one of my journals, all worked up with pinks and greens and things. So that's the other side of that particular um, doily. So I'm really loving how this is coming together because I've got all of these old doilies sitting in the cupboard and oh, I don't have a lot. I've picked them up here and there, plus inherited a couple. And I'm never ever going to stitch them and use them as a doily. So to cut out that design and work it in to a piece, I think this is the piece that's going to absorb a lot of those. And I still have my cross stitch roses as well, which I think will match. So there's a couple new elements that have come from searching for some uh, leaves. So let's have a play at the moment with my soluble heat soluble pen and just start having a think about my wildflowers i think oh, i want to show you how i did these so let's do another one of those and the little leaves they don't really have a home yet they sort of need to wait until i get my flowers in position but i just cut a couple out to see if the color would work and i do like that dark dark green they really bounce off of this. I'm thinking uh, there'll be a vine on here one day, maybe. Um, maybe a window or I, I just don't know. I did even think of taking this up the house. But I think I want something, I, I don't know. Oh gosh, there's so many ideas floating around in my head. Let's show you how I did these. This is just, let's get a bit of sari silk. Just a piece of sari silk or fabric or whatever you want. I might just do, where am I going with this? Am I going to do just an up? Maybe I'll just go up. So all I did was just pop my finger to hold that down and just wind it around my finger like so. So you can make these as big or as small as you want. I might make this one a little smaller because we're getting to the top of a branch or a plant. And then just pop a couple pins through it so it holds it into position. All right. And then where you finish it, I just give it a little twist so that gets a little bit pointed like it then could join into, I might pin that before I cut it. I don't know what this wildflower is called, but she's quite a extravagant wildflower. <laughs> I'm just going to snip that at a bit of an angle. And then when I do the stem, I can sort of keep squinching that and couch it a little bit and it'll join into the stem like this one here can join into the stem wherever that may be so let's get him stitched down first just so that that little flower is out of my way and i could probably probably do a couple more higher then i guess the next question is is it 
a bunch of flowers off of one plant or is it a bunch of flowers where each stem is coming up now just for ease I'm tucking my needle under the flower so that the knot will be in amongst it I'm finding it quite hard to get this panel ow pin this panel to work on when I'm not sitting with it on my lap does that make sense so to do it on camera is really tricky because you sort of need to have your hand under and it's such a big panel so just excuse for a moment while I just try and catch a few little invisible stitches now you can use a thread that matches your sari silk or your fabric but I don't didn't get up and grab a thread that matched and I was like oh it won't be needed because it's an invisible stitch it's the tiniest of little stitches so I'm still using my off-white and I'm just scooting around that rose let me zoom in so you can see I'm just going around him catching so if you want your flowers to look textured work fabric bits into them and then your embroidery like you can achieve a lot with embroidery but if you want it to be more textured have a look at some of your fabrics and see what you've got to build up your layers start with your big feature flowers um, get them into position and these guys are pretty big I'm not worrying about proportions there's no rules with this piece some of my running uh, some of my stitches on the bobbins will be probably a little bit more considerate of proportions but this guy is just all about crazy just anything goes it's a collage of random elements that come together due to color and theme that makes sense now I'm hoping I've got enough little stitches to hold everything until I get back to the stem. I think they're going to be single stems. Would make a great vine, hence why I did consider putting it up and over the house. But I could always do that and with another colour, sari silk. So that's, that's hold. I should be able to pull them out and that's not going anywhere. So that's good. So if we're going to do vines, let's have a look at this yarn. So let's have a look at proportions. Is one too thin? Yeah, it is. That's three yarns so it looks a bit thick that's two yeah I like that I think it's going to be two so what I might do is going to attempt to continue on and couch down and because he's so tall I'm gonna have him at the back hope I can do this. I'm going to use the sari silk to get us in position. And we'll just bring that down. I might just trim a little bit off.
because they're real whimsical flowers, you've sort of got a lot of wriggle room with your ideas and structure. So now I've just got to, I really need this in the air and under my hand to make it a bit easier on myself. So I'm just, but we'll get it. Just a couple little stitches and now we're on our way. I'm pretty sure I want straight. And now I can just couch that yarn down as I go with a bit of a wrapping. You get the general idea. I won't spend too much time on this because I want to nut out the rest of the flowers and how they're sort of going to come about. So that's just a case of continuing down until you get to the bottom. Okay, so I might trim that so it's out of our way. And then you, I do another, another stem there. Like so, and then another one there, and away you go from there. So possibly a couple more in this colour, just sort of to build it up. So that's the plan there. I'll just get rid of that needle. I'll come back to that. And let's pick up the pen and have a little look. Where do all these lacy bits? I'd like to make these into something. Maybe I'll come up a little bit on that camera shot. And this one's here. I think a similar sort of thing. They'll come up, but I might make them be a bit bendy. Pin him there. In him there. So it looks like the wind has sort of caught them a little bit. There's a bit of movement in them. And I had a third piece. Do we stretch that over to there? It's quite a big piece. Maybe up there. I look at the end of the day. Try not to overthink. So I do need to get a stem. Try not to overthink it. Just pin them down. And I like how that sort of comes to a V there. So I can do some embroidery potentially on the base of these. So it looks like they're connected to something. And then maybe that comes through there. Now these little leaves can go on one of these plants. I'm thinking these, these guys, and it's just a case of tucking them in where they look best. You could have a bit of branch coming out to it. And I just freeform cut a random shape. And what I'll do with those is using probably this white, this cream thread, but maybe a little bit thicker, like an embroidery thread, and just stitch straight up the center of the leaf with some stab stitch. And that'll hold him into position and he'll become part of this, um, this scene. Do I need another one? I might just cut another one. At least he's cut and he's there ready to go. He might, he might 
might tuck in there. We may not need him yet either. Maybe he comes on the front there, but we've got him ready. So we'll just pin him up to one side. We'll see how the rest sort of, maybe we do another, another rosette up here. Let's just grab that, that red. We wouldn't need a big one because we're getting high. So I'm just going to wind it, twisting as I go, just so it sort of all stays in a bit of a clump. I'll snip that off. Pop a pin in. And he's ready to secure if we're happy with his position by the time we finish. And then maybe this leaf can come in off of the stem that would go up to him. Yeah, I like that. I like how these crocheted pieces are looking very uh, wiry. And I think we'll keep the foliage for them very sticky, stick-like. Sort of really feels like a... a um, Um, what am I trying to say? A wildflower. Yeah, I like that. So the next thing is to have a think about some of the lower pieces. So <clears throat> I did have this fabric. What can we do with this? Maybe, um, maybe I'll create a teardrop. Um, just a circular top. It's a bit rough. Like that sort of shape. And then if that's stitched, where's needle and thread? Have a little play. If that's... Sorry, I'm just thinking of how I'm going to approach this little guy. Maybe I can pinch that together to create like... We'll just have a little play. Like crimping it together or like you're putting... Let's just come out of there. Maybe I need to wrap it. That would work if I used an embroidery thread and wrapped the stem. That could work. It's very flimsy because it's a, a chiffon -y sort of fabric. But that's got me with the base it's secure. So let's do him maybe close to the house, but not quite on the house. That way I can still do a vine up the house. And I'm just going to stitch him down because he's so delicate. I need to get my hand under there. couple little stitches for now. I'll reinforce him with some embroidery cotton, which I can then maybe put some stamens in the center of him or some beads, but at least he's, he's stitched it down. I can always snip him out if he doesn't look right, but that's, that's pretty good. I'm happy with that. Let's do a couple more stitches. So it's like invisible stitching your flowers into position if you're unsure of where they'll all lay or how they'll how they'll sit, you can do a little bit of this. You know he's he's secure. Alright, I'm just gonna knot that off the best I can. 
and then I'll come over it with embroidery cotton and sort of add some decorative stitching to him, but he's in position. So this little guy, I could even put a couple little invisible stitches in there to hold him, but what I think I'll do, where's the pen and paper? Okay, all I've got is a piece of cardboard. That little guy, I'd probably do maybe a little cluster of them and put some pistol stitches in the center of him, just a couple, just to give it a little bit of interest. <clears throat> keep, them, keep them low, maybe another one there. Then work out some form of stem, maybe they're all connected. And they sort of peek up around the back here like a, a weedy looking. Yeah, I think that'll work. A couple random little stitches. So that, that can go up through there. Okay, let's have another look. What else can we do? We've got a bit of space in here. <clears throat> Maybe I've got enough texture now and I start thinking about just random little flowers that fill spaces like little daisies but just with strokes or stitches that are like so can you see that yeah you can that type of thing just little fillers that can come in and start building up you know your space you could even pop another one over here so it looks like that plant has drifted across the field a little bit okay and whether I couch something in there or just use my embroidery thread then start looking at these smaller areas now there's there will be a stem coming down here for this guy but then there's these smaller zones and maybe some pistol stitches just to start filling in little gaps is how I'd approach that. The other thing I was wanting to have a look at is um, this front edge, I think has got potential for something just in there. I have um, a piece of embroidery embroidery uh, not embroidery crocheted and I had thought of pinning it over here underneath this rose but I'm now looking here and wondering if I bring it in to there just as a little something let's pin it could even bring some of these see how that line there that guy is to the front so I left that undone there so I could get that in behind but I sort of liked how that was sitting out I don't know why it doesn't make sense growing wise I guess but does it matter probably not so that red edge is now really disappearing ow ow back the fact that it ends there i'm not too worried about it yet because something could happen over there let's just pin this guy so if you're doing a page for a journal and not a roll this is exactly how i'd start piecing together a page is just focus on a little area, make that your feature, and then build out from there. Like I haven't edged any of these because I'm just not sure yet what sort of finish that's going to be. Might be blanket stitch, might be running stitch. It might be completely covered by all of this type of work that this just doesn't need anything. It competes with it. Who knows? Now we could do with some more flowers and maybe some that drift into this zone. So do we do that with embroidery or do we look for texture? Let's have a look. I've got this book here. 
let's just have a quick look through and see if there's something that catches our eye that could go there because it's very neutral here so maybe we go along the lines of something neutral i look at the wisteria mixed with isn't that beautiful just little stitches little french knots little bits of ribbon in here so it looks like there's lavender growing up there isn't that beautiful what about some lavender that's not really a wildflower but but we could do a combination let's do that okay so we're going to have a plant that has numerous elements to it see how they've got ribbon french knots and embroidery so the embroidery is the stem the ribbon is the leaves and then there's french knots so let's do something like that and i think we could probably maybe we come back here and give ourselves this is a wacky plant this one it's going to be I think the ribbon will struggle to come through some of these surfaces. So that may, maybe we head it back in this direction. So let me think. We could have quite a big leaf here. I'll have to dig out some ribbon embroidery pieces. Then we start building French knots I guess like a seed head and then maybe maybe this one comes over towards that rose piece and starts connecting this in um, a couple little ribbon bits Often plants too will, when you have a look at a plant, they will have a point of which a leaf comes out. So when you're doing your embroidery, have a think about that. If you start doing your um, leaves, they often look really good where they come out of the stem in the one location. So how did they do this bit? I like how that gets fine across the top there. And they've even got a bit of turkey work in here. And then the branch comes out and it gets little French knots. Gosh, she's clever, this lady. Jennifer, isn't it? Yeah. Gosh, if you haven't ordered this book, guys, do yourself a favour and grab it. Rachel um, put me onto it when she showed it. And I've actually ordered one for my mate, Mary Ann, as well. It should be here next week. Because if you're new to embroidery... There's just such great little ideas here. So I've just sort of free formed. I love that turkey work. Lots of French knots. That'll be fun to stitch through there. Whether I can get the, the ribbon through that might be a bit thick. We'll see how we go. So I might end up having to use a wall or something, but I'm going to try because it would be lovely to have a bit of ribbon embroidery. Yep, that's pretty good. Now I have a, where I unpicked this. See, you can see where the thread was. I think it was in under this seam here. So I want to utilize that indent and make a couple flowers. We'll just put some little random flower heads through there i don't know what they'll be maybe i don't know something <laughs> trying not to overthink it just see what sketches up okay that's pretty good and i don't know if i'll do as much in around the base like i did over here because sometimes you just need a little bit of air for things to breathe. And if you're putting a piece in that's full of stitches like that, like that one has leaves, it has French knots, stem stitch, then a little bit of turkey work, 
than French knots again, like it's quite an, an eclectic piece. Really pretty. Like, look at that. So I think I'll leave that space and maybe, maybe I'll look at doing something down here. What could I put there as a background? I'm just having a look in my box of lace. need something. How does this green look? It caught my eye because it has this fringed edge. So if I mess it up a little bit, make it even more messy. Maybe we put it in here. like so and we look at doing just some French knots some beads some clusters of randomness this is even on that fabric some leaves those yellow little flowers let's just cut those out I need to find this fabric because maybe, see that's nearly a little vine there. Gosh, now I'm heading off on another tangent. If I take that, that's like a bud. Whether I use this piece is another thing, but I need to go find this fabric because maybe to make that make sense, we can build a little plant out of this. Or not. Maybe we can do something down here. Maybe that goes in like that. I just build a little with a hint of yellow. Where is that fabric? Goodness knows. Here's another little yellow morsel. Just a tiny little flower. And maybe we attach it there. Or we add it to the end. Yeah, we'll add it to the end so it looks like that little branch is going somewhere. And then using some yellows, we can bring a little bit of yellow in. It's not a primary colour for the whole piece, but it certainly could be popping around. Yellow tends to freshen pieces up. The fabric's quite distorted there. You can barely make out that bud, but I can embroider the bud in. It looks like it's an extension of that piece. So I could meander through here with French knots and then this tiny little bit joins in. So there you go. Hang on, I just found more of the fabric lying here on the table. What could we get out of that? There's more yellow. Maybe we just cut a yellow lump out. like that and maybe we just make it a bit more circular see that'll bring in some mustards mustard colors as well maybe we just pin that up there and I'll put in a little stem to get to it Maybe grab another one. I'm just cutting a little circle. Bring that into there. This is a ground cover. That's what this is. It's a little ground cover. I think that needs to be a bit smaller. This guy is creeping along the, the ground. This little weed. 
Okay, so I'm liking that. So we've got this little thing happening here. We've got a nice feature piece that has been inspired by Jennifer's book. Then we've got some collaging over here to get some texture in. We still have this little space across here, whether it needs anything, who knows? Depends what sort of clusters here. So what I would do then next is just keep invisible stitching this all down. Get it secure and then you can come back without the pins and add your detail. So let's get my hand under here and I'm just going to start working. Get all this out of the way. This is so awkward. I need to lift it. This is going to be a pretty big panel and there'll be heaps of opportunities in the future just to add to it. That's why I like these bigger ones too, because I might learn a stitch somewhere and I want to practice the stitch where well, you can grab these types of panels out and add it somewhere because there's no rules with it. I'm just working through, so awkward. Not that I'm complaining. Oh, a bit of an update on Marianne's um, piece. We had our roast dinner. The boys toddled off to the um, movie and Marianne and I sat down and started having a look at some of her options and she's such a good girl. She had prepared her homework. She had sketched a little house, um, the, the fence leading into pastures, leading into a little scarecrow, a beehive, all sorts of things. It was only a, a picture, you know, as big as this, but she had a house, she had her fence, a um, little beehive, there was a scarecrow, there was some corn, a tree, there was this whole story. And she'd even written a story, like a little meandering story. I didn't read the text at that, it was just her thoughts. And she was thinking of doing the seasons. So we then had a look at how we would divide it down. It was the same sort of principle as my pastel um, one where I'm dividing it into three colors. So we had a little think about it and we decided that we would do, um, I think it's summer, autumn, winter, and then at the end, spring. Or summer was at the end or, you know, either way, summer and spring were at the beginning and at the end of the piece. So she's going to tell a story about a little vignette, a farm slash wildflowers slash meandering down that path as it goes through the seasons. And she's going to do it onto a bobbin. So similar size to, uh, well, same size as my other two. And we worked on just placing down the background fabric. So she had a rummage and she just looked for different textures, kept it pretty neutral. Once she starts embroidering, she can always bring in, let's get this in camera. She can always bring in, um, you know, pops of colour to really sell the story that you're now looking at winter, for example. So it looks really good. So she got her background pieces down. She invisible stitched most of it. So she's off now and she can start thinking about some of the stitching she might put around these background pieces. She did the entire panel um, just so that she's sort of now just focused on the story and the building of the embroidery on it. So you sort of got a few options with your piece. You can scoot ahead and lay them all down 
that's what I've done because that's the bulk of the work sort of done. You've, um, especially if it's just neutral and it's patches of fabric because you can then always lay over the top of that additional patches to bring in colour when needed or, you know, if the prompt is a beehive or whatever, you can just forget about your background because you've already got it into position and you're ready to, you know, stitch the prompt for the week. So I think there's a lot of work in this first phase, but once you sort of get your piece backgrounds in, I think you'll find that you'll be looking for more to do. And I bet you do multiple. I think you'll find that you will be only really stitching in, you know, a piece that's the size of the palm of your hand and you're done waiting for your next prompt so start another one have another think about colors and scraps and maybe do another one or do a page that can slide into a journal but yeah I'm, I'm thinking for I know it sounded ambitious when I first announced it and a lot of you went holy smokes that's that's full on. I don't think it will be, but I think once we get our backgrounds done, I think you'll all be looking for more opportunities to have a play. Now, I'm just going to pull that through. It needs to be knotted off, but I won't turn the work at this stage. <clears throat> so now I can remove all those pins. So that little morsel is in, and we'll see what comes of that. Um, let's get a little bit more of these pieces stitched it down. And then I'll have to drag out my embroidery cottons next and start popping in some stems and things. Let's just get a couple little stitches in here. What I've got to put at the end of this video, excuse me, <clears throat> are a couple photos of Mary Ann's piece. And what we did is we've laid the embroidery cottons in a cluster that suits the season. So the winter ones, the spring, the summer and the autumn. And I took a photo, I sort of just laid it under the iPad here and just took some photos. <clears throat> so you can sort of see where we're heading with the piece. The only embroidery cottons that just didn't quite sort of look like they were going to work um, was summer. If anything, though, Marianne sort of felt they were a little bit too primary in colour. So I think she'll rethink those cottons and pick something that's, have I got a thread caught over that? Yeah, I do. She'll rethink the colors to do with summer, I believe, because they just sort of didn't blend. You'll see what I mean when you see the photos. I think there'll be two, maybe three photos there at the very end of how Mary Ann's piece is gonna come along. But we had a lovely night. We had a beautiful roast dinner. Actually, my roast shrunk to nothing in the slow cooker and I was like, oh, oh I don't think we've got enough meat. So I quickly cooked up some big fat beef sausages so that, you know, matched the meal and just gave us a little bit extra because I bought this roast and <clears throat> it um, went into the slow cooker and it just shriveled to nothing absolutely nothing it was a beautiful piece of meat like don't get me wrong i got it from an actual butcher not um, a grocery store excuse me <clears throat> i love how that's curved look at that i love that wonkiness and that anyway 
I think that's why I'll make these a little curved. I might scoot over to there. Oh no, I'll finish. I'll finish that off. This is just not the most ideal spot to be working in. But it will be fine. What is that? Oh, that's a pin. Um, what will we do next? I might just get this guy. him down yeah so it was a beautiful dinner bar my meat disintegrated into barely little bits and it was a bit of a mad rush to quickly create something that would complement it so some beef sausages came to the rescue and heaps of roast veggies so it was really yummy if I do say so myself Okay. So the next video you will see will be one of the other pieces giving you an update of how the background came together and um, then planning out what we're going to stitch on them. Now, I know I haven't done a lot of embroidery on this particular piece, but it's just so awkward because it's big. So what we'll do in some of the other videos, we'll do some actual embroidery so you can sort of see what my thoughts are finished. So that one's there. And that one will be stitched down there. We need to catch this little guy to make him sit right. I'll put another pin in there just to hold him and I need some more thread these pieces of embroidery to the side here those doilies <clears throat> I'm not sure how I'm going to embroider them yet whether I do a bit of feature embroidery I sort of like the fact too that I can see the lines it sort of adds more interest to my panel as well so maybe I do the leaves and not all the leaves or I just don't know I can have a little bit of a play so you can break all the rules because it's not a doily that's sitting on a duchess so you would want it all you know as it was meant to be we can sort of break a few rules I'm going to try and grab that through. Oh, See, what I will do off camera is I'll go back and stitch all of these little points down on these little doily bits. Otherwise, they too can catch, catch your um, thread as you're working your, your flowers. I love how that V has appeared. See the V at the bottom of that, that line? That's really good. It really makes the eye think that this is a flower. You know what we could do out the top of that flower? See how we've also got a line at the bottom? Let's get crazy. Let's do some whimsical out the top why not they are wildflowers so we can do some odd little bits and pieces to them they don't have to all be the same these are very rose like which ties it to the theme the you know that antique rose but we can have a couple that go a bit crazy like maybe this one here has to go crazy two different plants two different flowers maybe we do that in there as well there's a bit of a gap there 
Maybe that moves over a bit. That'll give that room there for that. And if I make sure I get that V happening, those two can have crazy stamens coming out of them. Maybe we could get a bead on there. A cream bead or something. Where's my beads? They're not close, are they? No, it's so I've packed. The beads are all sitting, packed away, ready to go. <clears throat> another video, another day. But I think you get the general gist of it. I think I've probably got enough stitches in this little guy. Don't think he's going anywhere. Let's pull the pins out and have a feel. Yeah, that's good. Okay, let's finish this off. How are we going for time? I've got a little bit more time yet. Yeah, I'm happy with that. So I might just catch that leaf around the center. It won't be held by this thread. It's just to hold it there and get rid of that pin. So just some couple little stitches. Then I can scoot over to this guy, get rid of that pin. I can come over to here and we can get this guy stitched down. So I think my video process will be, I think, um, the girls do their prompts on the Wednesday then I think my first video to do with one of the pieces will appear on the Saturday. Another project will be the, the Sunday, then the Monday, then the Tuesday. So that gives me Wednesday to sort of think about it through the night, you know, till three in the morning. Then Thursday, Friday to do stitching, planning, filming, and then leaf is caught the pin then you guys will see the four videos connected to the project saturday sunday and monday now that's australian time so it might be a bit different for those in other places on this big spinning rock that we're all on yeah i think that's how it's going to flow then susanna and her project, Vintage Sewing Techniques, one prompt per month, that video will pop up on a Friday because I'm pre-recording that I'm up to the April prompt. So they're not every Friday, but they will be predominantly Fridays because I think Susanna's prompt comes out on a Tuesday. So I'll then release mine on the Friday. So you'll probably won't get a video from me on a Wednesday. If you do, it'll be just a random project that I'm working on in the background and just give you a bit of an update, like redoing my red book, for example, or some other random thing that may pop up. Nothing planned. So you might not see a video on the Wednesday, but who knows? That's pretty much going to be my free day for whatever i know i've got a couple etsy shares that i want to give you of um, some australian stores that i've bought from so maybe wednesday is that sort of random day and it's free i guess if there's something i need to update you with concerning the roxy project we've got the wednesday there so that's how i think the videos will flow the roxy Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, 
one day per piece. Friday it will be Susanna's prompts, working on, on that. I'm just couching down. Oh, you can't even see. Goodness, sorry guys. I'm just couching down the rest of this stem and getting it squared away. And then I think that'll be pretty much it. And I will see you in the next video, which will be one of the other panels, or one of the other pieces. But this will set me up for the week of stitching now. Give me something to do while we wait for the next prompt. That's it, slowly coming down. I'll tuck it behind that lace. like so I must say I'm really enjoying having four different completely different pieces to go to it's like you get to start again on something completely different so if you game do another one <clears throat> you might be cursing me by the end of it but I don't think you will I don't think you will or maybe just a page in your book. So you could do you could do your little wildflower prompt and then go and do a page of wildflowers for an actual journal. So like a bigger study of it. You could increase what you've done here into a bigger page. Just an idea. If you're looking for more stitching. Okay. That is that branch coming down secure. I'll need to put a few little stitches on that guy to get him back into position. He's come away a little bit. A couple more little stitches there. And I need to stitch this little piece of lace down. There's a bit of a curve in that lace. I'm going over time here. That was a scalloped edge, so I might emphasize that because I want to sit that way instead of making it sit flat and straight. I'll follow the curve just to make it look a little bit more interesting. There we go. Okay, guys, that's the plan. I will have a play with this embroidery, have a play with my ground cover here. And that's the wildflower plumped coming together. I'll see you all in the next video, which will be one of the other pieces. All right, guys. Bye for now.